Hey folks, Jew here. So on the 5th of January 2024, I decided to start a new Cookie Run Kingdom account purely focused on progression. Buckle up because this day 2 recap is going to be insane. We started the day off grinding world exploration levels, not only for crystals but also EXP since I need to unlock the mines with the laboratory and to uncap my stamina galleys. Before I was interrupted by a damn obstacle, I still had things to do since my castle 5 upgrade that I had queued overnight completed. And then went ahead to do some kingdom stuff. Shortly after, I'll get some landmarks, but for now it's just random miscellaneous stuff. Which is also when I went on to attack the Hall of Ancient Heroes. Since the XP in the early game is quite limited, this feature is very useful for cookies like Mitchell and Twisty. Let's raise them to survive AOD, which is an issue since I don't have a lot of bonds yet, yet I can always remove them from Hall once I do have an alpha. After some kingdom stuff, I went ahead and bought as many stat landmarks as I could have. Which is also when I found out that Skull Islands take a 4x5 space of Sword Stream, that's annoying. And so I was still missing the Dark Jungle Altar, to world exploration we go. In a while, you can never guess what I did. More world exploration. It's just more world exploration. I really needed to unlock the magic lab to start working on magic candies, so I really needed the XP. And after clearing 8 8 and claiming the quest that rewards you for it, I finally unlocked it. Whilst that's building, it's time for Arena. Climbing in DCA is super easy, tons of play teams that give free trophies, but on top of that, with Rebel Cookie being an insane debuffer, a lot of random shitter teams, despite having much more power, just dies to one Rebel cast. The first MCs I'll get in raise will definitely be guild boss ones, namely Madeline, Greenpuff, Black Raisin, and Snow Sugar for budget RBD. For my first ever MC, it'll be Madeline since I'm prioritizing my AOD team because of how cheap it is and Maddie needs his MC to survive the AOD team. Another great thing about Maddie is that he's part of two bonds where he's the only epic, so starting him up gives a lot of stats for all of your players. Oh, and I spent 3k crystals on unlocking the Red Dragon Special EP. I have no idea where the recording for that went. Part of the reason was because I'm not waiting to complete Chapter 3 of the Kugia Odyssey to complete it, but also the level 50 concentrate so I can immediately get Maddie high enough to make his MC. Though, even with him at level 50, I still don't have his MC materials. Which is where the special episodes and event shop comes in. I wouldn't buy these chests normally, but considering it's to accelerate progress, I think it's worth it in my scenario. After, I unlocked the Sugar Gnome Laboratory. Quite a few unlocks today, I know. 
So I'll only be prioritizing a few select nodes such as Story and Dark Mastery, as well as Tastier Star Gilius. Shortly after, I unlocked the Pavilion of Promise as well. I went for Snapdragon as my first choice due to their universality, though looking back, Icicle Yeti is nichier yet much more powerful in its niche. Tropical Soda Islands unlocked as well. So many unlocks today. Add speed ups are very nice in the early game. One league to go thanks to bay teams. Thanks to all the cutters, I was able to do a temple for zero crystals. Not a bond cookie, so that was a bit of a shame, but oh well. And before ending the day off, I'm setting up a castle upgrade just before I go to bed. To 
add a bit of waste of crystals to refresh the arena tickets. I just also wanted to hit masters before going to bed. There it is. Day 2 with a Magic Candy as well as Hitting Masters in Arena. Good night and like and subscribe to see more.